They are some of the most beautiful and intelligent members of the bird world. But many of these macaws and their relatives in the parrot family have been neglected, ignored or abused. This can drive the birds to the point of plucking their feathers, even self-mutilation. And it's usually a stress-related uh, incident that causes them to do that. It could be loneliness, it could be boredom because they aren't given toys. Um, but once a parrot starts that plucking behavior, it's very hard to get them to stop. Janet Trumbull is referring to some of the birds that are getting a second lease on life at the Oasis Sanctuary in Cochise County, southeast of Tucson. The sanctuary was founded in Phoenix in 1997, but due to the demand for this specialized shelter, it moved to these much bigger quarters a few years later. Many of them are um, prior companion parrots. Um, some of them have been prior breeders who are non-productive at this point and need a place to live out their life. There are some birds in here that are wild-caught birds that have come to us through um, fish and wildlife. They confiscated these birds at the border, uh, being smuggled in. Now it is home to more than 700 birds from different species. There are individuals that have grown too big or too aggressive to handle, but others are simply no longer wanted. Their owners had a change of address or a change of heart about keeping one of these creatures. They are beautiful, aren't they? But they do not make ideal pets. Parrots are just a couple generations out of the wild, so in reality they are wild animals. And living with a parrot is living with a wild animal, and you have to take the good with the bad. And that includes the screaming, the destruction, um, the behavioral issues that come along with caging a wild animal. Trumbull is the executive director of administration at the sanctuary, which depends on a small contingency of staff and volunteers to keep it running. It's a time-consuming and labor-intensive operation. Multiple cages and aviaries require fresh water and food every day, along with vigilance for maintenance and repairs. <laughs> That's the thing about this job for me, is I'm the executive director, I'm the, uh, I'm the animal caretaker, I'm the landlord, I'm the Mr. Fix-It guy, the electrician, the plumber, everything. But Joe Dyson and other workers say the birds in the mission make it all worthwhile. Yoch has a degree in zoo animal technology. She has traveled the world for different jobs, from Florida to Colorado and California in the U.S. to distant lands such as Norway or China. I've been in animal care for over 23 years working in zoos and, and sanctuaries and in rehabilitation. And uh, this just seemed like a perfect fit for me. We interact with them all the time as the day goes on. I mean, this is the only job you'll go to where you'll walk in and a bird will say, I love you, first thing in the morning. So it feels good, it feels pretty good. They're unique in that uh, each one of them has a very different personality. And they, and they have different people that they like, you know. They like some people, they don't like other people, and they let them know that. And while the birds can be fun and entertaining, staff members at the facilities say their mission includes education. They want people to know that parrots require appropriate homes with sufficient commitment and attention. These are such a lifelong commitment. Many of them live 60, 80, even 100 years. If you don't understand what that means, don't go near it. Get misty on, aren't we? Hello. Every year, a growing number of these birds Hello. has nowhere to turn because space Hello. is running out. Hello. There are only a few accredited sanctuaries across the country, and all of them are full. So there is always a need to have a place for these birds to go. We turn away birds every day, but we do have a waiting list of about 150 birds. So if there is a, a situation where we really feel the bird would benefit from our um, help, then we can put them on the waiting list and we try and get them in as soon as possible. It could take a year or possibly more. Most of the conditions you see here, um, you wouldn't see on any bird in the wild. This is all the conditions you see are a result of captivity. And you've got to remember that we are their final home. Many of these birds have been rehomed more than once, and it didn't work out. Hi. What are you doing, Chugga Chugga? What you doing? Hi. 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 Hi.